Well, today we look at uh, chapter 12 of my book, Walking the Line, Embracing the Imperatives of Jesus. So we've looked at 11 chapters so far. Here we come to the final chapter of listening to God's word and particularly the commands, the imperatives that he gives to us as our master teacher. And this chapter is called The Power of Duplication. And it picks up on the Great Commission here at the end of Matthew 28, 16 to 20. I'll read it. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. So this is Christ's final command uh, in the Gospel of Matthew. And it's to go and make disciples, to be disciples makers. So I'll read a little bit. The disciples have been enrolled in the school of Christ for some three years. During this time, Jesus has been teaching and modeling before them the ways and values of God's kingdom. Overall, it has been a successful tutelage, in brackets with some bumps along the way, and they have made progress in their understanding and practice of the spiritual life. However, a new phase of ministry is starting up in which the disciples will be sent throughout the world with the message of God's redeeming love. For this to happen, Jesus will no longer be physically with them but will be with them interiorly as they announce the good news that the kingdom of God has come near. It will be a new day, one which calls for attentiveness and discernment to the Spirit's voice. To this end, Jesus prepares them for their new roles as teachers, helping new students learn the values of God's kingdom. So here in, in this unit, Jesus is the sender, capital of S. He's the sender. And now he is sending us. So we as believers are now the sent ones. Christ is the sender. We are the sent ones. And when Jesus gives this command, it's not just for the, you know, the original 12 disciples. It's not just for folk in his day. But Jesus continues to send us to be disciple makers. And there is a new focus here, and that focus is to teach. This is a new emphasis, as Jesus concludes. As he is the great teacher, the school of Christ, we are also to be teachers and to claim that mantle in some way, at whatever way and wherever our audience is, family, friends neighbors, whatever, to present the word and message of Jesus. So he is the sender, Christ, we are the sent ones. To claim that and to claim the reality of being disciple makers. So in our book, in my book here, at the end of each chapter, we have uh, some questions, and these questions are meant Individually, we can reflect on these for each chapter, or in some sort of small group, you might be able to do it, or with some friends. So I thought today I would just highlight the questions that I'm using here at the end of this chapter. So they go like this. Number one, four questions in this chapter. Jesus is the sender, and we are his sent one. He calls us to go out into our world and through word and deed communicate his compassionate love. As you reflect on Jesus' invitation, consider the ways you can help others grow in their faith. Are there specific steps you can take to come alongside others and assist them in their spiritual journey? So that's a question. If we're all to become mentors of others to help others know Jesus, how can you do that in your own sphere of influence? So the question is asking us, okay, take some time to reflect and consider that reality in your life. Are there ways that you can assist others? Hearing Jesus 
great commission to you. His final word to us, so it's an important word. Second question, in his final mandate, Jesus highlights the important area of teaching in the process of making disciples. In my experience, I have seen that many churches have opportunities for people to use their teaching gifts in the areas of adult, youth, or children's ministries. Is it possible that you could teach in one of these capacities? I conclude here, spend time praying over this vital area of service so that the Spirit will raise up teachers, you or someone else, for the maturation of his church. So how can you teach, how can I teach? Is there any way? Certainly in the work of the church, in the areas of children's ministries, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities. Or youth work, helping people, mentor others to encourage them. We need people to take up the role of teachers, very, very important role in the body of Christ. Thirdly, mentoring others is an excellent way to engage in the ministry of disciple making. It happens as we spend time with new believers and help them to understand and grow in the ways of Christ. Take time to reflect and journal about how you might walk with someone as a spiritual companion. Is there, are there openings, opportunities for you to mentor others? Important question. You know, to lift our eyes up and, okay, well, how can I be a disciple maker for Christ? How can I claim the Great Commission in my own life? And finally, question four, participating in a cell group has proven to be a wonderful way of both growing and helping others to grow in their walk of faith. Consider the ways you might participate in a cell group as either an active participant or as a group leader. Know that your involvement in a discipleship group will pay dividends for your own spiritual growth and for the enrichment of others as you walk together in Jesus. You know, the Methodists of old, my mother was a Methodist, her mother was a Methodist, big emphasis with Methodists were small groups. Every believer, every Methodist was to be part of some small group of four or five other believers. And in a sense, they were accountability groups where you would openly share, support one another. And through that support network, Methodism grew all around the world. Still is a very important uh, way to grow in your faith and to make disciples small groups. In our own church here at Weston Park, I'd love to see more, more small groups, people meeting together to talk and to share and grow in the faith. This is a great way in terms of disciple making. So at the end of each chapter, there are a variety of questions. The questions are there to help you reflect individually and in a, in a group sense as you're able to do that. These are some of the questions, or are the questions for chapter 12, how to become disciple makers. I pray that for you and for me, we all have a heart that wants that. that we want to produce a harvest, and a, you know, a harvest of a hundredfold, as Jesus says, as we work with him. In Christ's name, let's try to do that together. Amen.